as of 1448, every Ottoman expedition into Arberia had failed. Nonetheless, by the spring of 1448, their position became threatened by a new Ottoman campaign. This time, Sultan Murad II was preparing to march into Arberia himself with an army that contained approximately 80,000 men in an aim to fragment the League. Realizing the magnitude of the Ottoman army, Skanderbeg urgently sends out envoys to Christian allies for military aid. The Venetians, who prior had offered an annual pension of 100 golden ducats for the person who killed Skanderbeg, did not help him. Instead, the only aid Skanderbeg received came from Naples and Ragusa. Well aware of a secret Venetian-Ottoman pact, and fearing that the Venetian might join the Ottomans and attack him from the rear, Skanderbeg had to eliminate the danger the Venetians posed. Before leaving Kruja, Skanderbeg sends out 4,000 men under the command of Varana Conti to protect the eastern borders of Dibra, while the rest of the army headed out to besiege the Venetian castle of Danya. Simultaneously, as the Ottoman threat was approaching Arbor strongholds, Skanderbeg left his nephew Hamza Kastriotti to command several units and continue the blockade of Danya, while he himself, with the main part of the army, continued towards the border to regroup with Vrana Conti. Upon facing the Arbor League army of around 10 to 14,000 men, the same army who defeated the Ottomans three years in a row. Sultan Murad's main goal was to wipe out the League and then take back Kruja. To do that, he first had to control advantage points that stretched through the eastern borders of Arbor-controlled possessions. After he managed to secure the border in May 14, 1448, the Sultan ordered his army to besiege the fortress of Svetigrad. Before the siege commenced, Skanderbeg ordered Vrana Conti to aid Pieter Parleti to defend the castle from inside, while his remaining troops would defend the castle from the outside. After a month of attacking the castle, Vrana Conti and his troops resisted and fought furiously day and night, prevented the Ottomans from besieging the castle. Meanwhile, as Skanderbeg and his troops attacked the Ottomans from the outside, would time and again put the Ottomans in a difficult position. Sultan Murad even tried to corner Skanderbeg's forces into a decisive battle, but failed. Occasionally, Skanderbeg would use his well-known guerrilla tactics, where small forces continually harassed the Ottoman army by attacking isolated forces, inflicting heavy damages and hastily escaping to safety. Finally, after two months of cannon bombardments, the Ottomans found the water canal that led to the castle and cut off their water supply. As a result, the worn-out commander of the castle, Pieter Parleti, finally had to capitulate and surrender the castle on 31st of July, 1448. Hoping that the Sultan would keep his promise and spare the residents for surrendering the castle, were instead massacred. The fall of Svetigrad castle became a heavy loss for the Arbors. Exhausted by a long siege, the Sultan returned to Edirne to recover. As the Sultan was preparing his final step to conquer Kruja, he was informed that Hunyadi and Skanderbeg had made a pact and was preparing a new Christian campaign against him. Afraid of facing both Hunyadi and Skanderbeg in the same battle, the Sultan planned to divide and conquer them, each at separate occasions. In early October of 1448, while the Arbor Venetian Peace Treaty was being signed, Janusz Hunyadi had already marched his army to the south and passed through Dardania to meet up with Skanderbeg. Meanwhile, as Skanderbeg was preoccupied 
with obstacles that Jurat Brankovic had placed along the way, hindered the League army to cross through Brankovic's possessions and join Hunyadi's forces. Unaware of Skanderbeg's delay, Hunyadi decided to make his stand against the Ottomans on October 18, 1448. In the Second Battle of Kosovo, the Hungarian army suffered a severe defeat and was forced to retreat. In the midst of retreating, Hunyadi was captured and was taken prisoner by Brankovic, but was later released against a ransom of 100,000 florins, estimated worth of around 50,000 euros. During the Arbor Uprising between 1444 to 1448, the League of Leja had not only reaped military victories against the Ottoman forces in Torviol, Rahonik, and Otoneta, but also suffered defeat at the Battle of Svetigrad. In spite of Sultan Murat's victory at Svetigrad, his primary objective remained to regain Kruja and eliminate the Arbor League. Well aware of Murat's preparation, Skanderbeg and the League of Leisure eagerly awaited Murat's next step. Due to the unfortunate war with Venice in 1448, in addition to losing Svetigrad fortress and the demolition carried out by Ottoman invading forces along the countryside, isolated many Arbor nobles along the eastern border. Not only did these setbacks halted their economic and political situation, but it also caused a few influential Arbor lords to leave the League of Leja. Despite this, Skanderbeg was not without allies. Janusz Hunyadi, who was a strong military ally and a member of the League, would oftentimes help Skanderbeg in his war efforts against Ottoman armies. After months of preparation, Sultan Murad II gathered his Anatolian forces and ordered his European vassals to aid him in capturing Kruja. With the arrival of spring in 1450, Sultan Murad, together with his son Mehmed II, marched towards the old Illyrian city of Ohrid. As the Ottoman armies approached Arbor territories, they encountered peasant troops that were ordered by Skanderbeg to damage any passing forces during their march. At the end of May in 1450, Sultan Murad and his son Mehmed II, who was 18 years at the time, arrived at the Ottoman camp in front of Kruja. Outnumbered 10 to 1, the Arbor Regular Army was divided into two parts. First, Skanderbeg made sure to secure Kruja by leaving around 1,500 of his most seasoned men under the command of Vrana Conti to protect the castle from the inside. The rest of the Regular Army of around 8 to 10,000 well-trained men, led by Skanderbeg, were based well outside the castle on Mount Tumenisht also known as Mount Skanderbeg. Before the attack on the fortress began, the Sultan sends an army to clear the area around Kruja, burning down everything along the way. Thinking that he had the upper hand and hoping to take the castle without a fight, the Sultan tried to bribe Vrana Conti by offering him a large sum of gold ducats, but was boastfully refused. The Sultan then ordered to fire cannon shells and after days of battering the castle, they managed to knock down a part of its wall. When the Janissaries furiously attacked the castle, they were quickly met by a strong Arbor garrison that managed to push back the assault and gave them much needed time to repair the walls. After five exhausting months of battering the castle walls, and not enough supplies to continue the siege. The Sultan ordered one last massive assault on the castle. Putting the defensive garrison in the castle and Skanderbeg in a tenuous position for the upcoming winter. Knowing that the castle could not withstand for much longer, 
Skanderbeg sends a message to the Venetians where he threatened to capitulate the fortress to the Turks if the Venetians did not assist him. Despite that the Venetian rejected Skanderbeg's threat, they offered instead to make peace with the Sultan. Fearing of losing even more men to the harsh approaching winter, but also falling ill during his siege, Murat accepted the peace treaty and then lifted the siege on October 26, 1450 and went back to Edirne. Even though the Ottomans had an army ten times greater, the excellent heroism of the Arbor soldiers and their enormous triumph they achieved against the Ottomans echoed all over Europe, quickly began to recognize Skanderbeg's authority and praised him as the sole leader and excellent defender of their freedom. A few months later, on February 3rd, 1451, Sultan Murat II died at the age of 46. As soon as the 21-year-old Mehmed II ascended to the Ottoman throne on February 3rd, 1451, his ambitions became well known across Europe. First, he wanted to avenge the shame he and his father had suffered under the walls of Kruja, and second, to overshadow all former territories of the Eastern and Western Roman Empire. It is highly appreciated that you took the time to watch this episode of Skanderbeg. To ensure that our videos reach more viewers, please like our videos, share them with friends, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss new content. Until next time, Tung.